Okay, hey, how's it going? Um, in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about how I implemented the output from the vehicle detection module that I showed in my other video uh, and how I used it uh, to set off some chimes inside my house to um, connect to my alarm system and to also um, notify me um, via text messaging and using my automation system. So first, let's take a look at the schematic. Um, this thing looks pretty busy. Uh, I drew it up partially before, kind of loosely on paper, and then I drew it up a little better so I have a good record of it. Let me just walk you through the major components, and then we're going to simplify it a little bit. So down here in this corner here, uh, so this is the actual um, loop that um, I made in the other video. That's buried underground. And then this is the vehicle detector module, which you saw. Um, and then in that same um, enclosure you saw a transformer. So everything over here is the vehicle uh, detecting loop and the module and the transformer to power it all. Um, so it is an independent system and I showed you that before. Uh, and then it's connected up to everything else uh, via two wires. So uh, this is just a piece of alarm cable runs over and it hooks to everything else. And by everything else I mean everything over here. So uh, let me just show you what all these things are first, um, and then we'll, we'll talk through them. These three things along the top, um, each of these, um, this is a, uh, a chime. These are just, uh, all right, there we go. These are just, um, th these three things up here. These are just electric chimes. They're multi-tone chimes. I bought them on Amazon. This is what they look like. They look like this picture here. They were $22 a piece. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, do this was I wanted to uh, uh, also fix my doorbell issue. My doorbell issue is that if someone rings the doorbell, I've got one of those traditional doorbell sounders in the hallway. Um, if you're in the family room, you hear it, but if you're off in the bedroom, you don't. Uh, in the kids' bedrooms, you don't. In the basement, you certainly don't. Um, so these... Um, multi-tone chimes, the way they're going to work is one chime is going to represent the doorbell, one tone, um, and then another tone is going to represent a vehicle in the driveway. Um, and all three of the chimes are spread out. One's in the basement, one's in the family room, and one's in the master bedroom. So no matter where you are in the house, you're going to hear it. Um, so those are the chimes. Uh, down here, this little corner right here that you see in the corner, this is just a little piece of the alarm system in my house, okay? I've got a pretty advanced alarm system. I've got a Honeywell Vista 32-channel uh, alarm system. Um, so, so that's a little piece of it that, is, that we're connected up to. Um, here in the middle, uh, this is the actual doorbell button. This is two-wire. Um, this really is just a terminal block. Um, that's all that's shown right there. Uh, when you're making so many connections of different wires, um, you got to really, you kind of end up using a terminal block just because you can only put so many wires under one screw terminal. Uh, and then last, I had to use a relay. So what's right here in this green box is a 12 volt DC coil relay. So um, really quick, let's first off start simplifying this diagram before I try to explain it because. It, it's going to make a lot more sense if I simplify it. So um, a lot of things here are powered by 12 volts all the time. All the chimes are powered by 12 volts all the time. The um, uh, vehicle detector is powered by 12 volts. So uh, let's just hide the um, 12 volt stuff and that'll simplify it a little bit. So the other thing that's going on um, is there's three chimes uh, up here? You see, there's three. There's three chimes, and um, that makes it a little bit more complicated because um, these two chimes here were wired to. We're both wired in the attic, so they're hooked together. Uh, so they only have this one wire right here uh, coming down into the into the basement wiring center. But this one is in the basement, so it has its own wire. So there's two wires coming in, you know, two two conductor cables coming in um, with the positive 12 volt, with two separate positive 12 volt signals for the two chimes. One of those 12 volt signals represents doorbell chime. One represents um, vehicle uh, detector chime. So let's just hide two of those because um, 
that'll make it look incredibly more simple too. Um, so we've already talked about what's over here. Now it's a little more simple. Um, let's do the easy part first, which is the doorbell. Um, I did keep this 12 volt power right here. So this this uh, two conductor wire brings 12 volt power in. It's powered by the alarm system uh, because it's right there close and it's an easy way to do that. So 12 volt power comes into this terminal block here and gets distributed. So doorbell simple. It's a normally open momentary push button um, and it when it closes it sends 12 volt up this wire which is the black wire in that cable and sets the chime off and that is the end of it. It is that simple. Um, it really is just uh, a simple circuit. Um, the other one is a little more complicated and I'm going to explain why. Um, uh, the problem with just hooking up to a chime is I want to do more than that. Um, I wanted to hook it up to my automation system also. I wanted it to sound the chime and I wanted it to trigger my automation system. Uh, because my automation system, which I'm going to explain a little later, um, sends me a text message depending on um, some other conditions, whether or not we're away from home, what time of day it is, and stuff like that. The other thing I wanted is this: these chimes, um, I don't want them to chime at nighttime um, because if the kids are sleeping, it, we really don't want to just be woke up. So one of the things that's going on is I'm using one of the relay outputs on my alarm system, which is right, right over here. Um, this is the relay output on my alarm system. I'm using it running a schedule that I set up in the alarm system that um, is um, contacts closed between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. every day. And between uh, 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. overnight, contacts are open. So uh, that way there's no chime. Um, but what I did in the programming in the automation system is I told it that um, anytime, whether we're at home or not, if there's a vehicle detected um, during that time period, nighttime, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., to text message my phone. So this way, if somebody's coming in late, me or uh, Jana are coming in late, um, instead of setting the chime off and waking up the kids, uh, it will just um, they'll send me a text message. Um, so a few things going on there. So let's talk about this signal. Uh, so the signal from the vehicle detector module is closed anytime there's a vehicle detected. Okay, so that signal comes in here. This, uh, so one of the two wires comes here to um, plus 12 volts. So it sends 12 volts down this wire, which goes and closes this relay. So that's pretty much all that's happening here. Um, if a vehicle is detected, it closes the relay. Um, had that detector module had two sets of contacts, I wouldn't even need that relay. But it only had one set, and I really need two sets. The reason why I need two sets is one relay contact is used to sound the chime, and the other relay contact is used to connect to the alarm system. So, first set of relays here, 12, 12 volts gets powered over this set of contact, which goes down here, goes through the contacts on the alarm system output to make sure it's daytime, and then sends it up the red wire which goes up to the chime and does the vehicle alert chime. Uh, the other set of contacts closes and that contact is very simply wired into zone number 32 of my alarm system. Um, and that's kind of it. There's some other junk going on but it's really just wiring distribution and how I, I created this diagram. Um, the rest of that stuff I was showing you, um, the full diagram, uh, just shows a little more detail because I want a record of all of it so if a few years from now I'm trying to get in and work on it I can figure out what the heck I was doing at the time and at the end of the day it did get a little bit complicated so I wanted a good record of it and the notes I had scribbled down um, I'm afraid they wouldn't make it um, but now having it saved to my computer I'm sure I'll have it so that's the overview of how it's hooked up now I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, automation system programming and in uh, the diagram I just showed you, um, the uh, contact input was wired to input zone 32. And it was also, uh, the chime was in, wired in line with an output relay. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how to actually set that up. So I have a Honeywell Vista alarm system. And what I have open here is the programming guide for that alarm system. And um, without going into a lot of detail, 
programming these things is not easy. You don't do it on your computer. You have to do it at the panel. You key a bunch of stuff in. Um, it's pretty tricky. Uh, you got to have this thing, this a, a paper copy of this in your hand, or you're going to get lost. But you pretty much go into this output device menu mode. Uh, you enter an output number. Notice right here that um, you can set up a relay or an X10 output. We're going to use one of each of those. So um, on output type, um, one is for relay and two is for power line carrier, which means X10. So we're going to, you know, in my case, I set up one of each of those. Um, uh, unit number right here, you put the X10 uh, unit number that you choose. Um, between 01 and 16 uh, and then if you're doing a relay you put the module address and I have a zone expander module actually I have two zone expander modules and I'm using one of the relays on one of those two modules each of those zone expander modules increases your zones by 8 and increases your outputs by 2 so I have um, four relay outputs that I can work with on my system uh, from those two zone expander modules so you put the module address um, and if you're using a this relay position, if you're using a zone expander, you've got to put the relay position, which is one or two. Um, and then once you create the output devices, which I've created two on mine, uh, then you have to set up output functions. And um, let's talk first about the X10 one. Um, for the X10 one, um, what I wanted on that one is any time that uh, the alarm system receives a contact closure input from that vehicle detector, I want it to send an X10 command. Um, pretty simple. So um, you enter the out, you know, pick an output function number. Um, down here on activated by, you want to pick, t uh, I'm sorry, three, which is zone number. Um, you would enter the zone number for that, which in my case was 32. Um, and um, let me get it down here. Output action, um, you want to do uh, actually for uh, X10 output, I have uh, found to just, uh, I always use this close and stay close because it just sends one X10 command anyway. Um, so it's pretty straightforward um, on how to do this. It's a little tricky because you got to do it at the alarm panel, but the Honeywell Vista alarm system will let you. Um, do an output to an X, send an X10 command based on uh, a zone input. Um, so then that's one thing. Then the, the other thing I wanted to show you in here um, is schedules. So the other output, which is the relay output, for that one I created a schedule. So you go in here to this section here, you, you type this in to get to the schedule setup part of the uh, alarm system. Um, I just created one schedule and um, I did it as a event was an 01 relay on off device number I did whatever um, uh, output number I assigned for that device and then over here I did um, see where it says start um, you pick the start time on the screen you enter the hour and minute a.m. or p.m. Um, and then there's uh, on the screen, it doesn't show it on here, but when you're setting this on the screen, it shows the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday um, list. And you put a one by every one of those days that you want it to run. Then you put a stop time. And I put a start time from uh, 7 a.m., a stop time at 10 p.m., as I told you before. And then on the repeat option, I put uh, number one, which is repeat the schedule weekly. Um, so that was it. That's all the programming I did within the Honeywell alarm system. I did want to take just a minute and show you the actual components uh, next to my alarm system, the relay, the terminal block, etc. So uh, this is the main panel. These are the two expander modules. Um, I'm actually uh, using zone 32 which is way down here on this expander module and I'm using uh, the output relay from this expander module and um, the way I did that, what you get with the expander modules is just a short little harness. So I put a terminal block right there for hooking into the two relays. You can see I'm only using one of them. Uh, and then uh, this is actually the terminal block that you saw on the wiring diagram. It just uses a wiring center. And this is the relay that you saw on the, uh, on the wiring di diagram. 
Now, at my house, I use an ISY uh, 994 module made by Universal Devices. Um, it actually looks like this. Uh, this is the uh, kind of central nervous system for my home's uh, home automation. Uh, I really like this thing. Uh, it's an older product. I've had it for a long time, though. It's really dependable. It doesn't work over the cloud. It all works local. Um, it will um, send and receive um, Instion, Z-Wave, uh, and X10 commands. Um, so it's pretty cool. It does some uh, wireless as well as power line carrier type communication. Uh, and it is very customizable, as I'm going to show you. Uh, what I have open here is the um, admin interface for the ISY994 module. And um, I'm in the Programs tab, Details, uh, and I have a program open and on the screen here that I created that I'm going to show you right now um, that is what receives the X10 signal um, from the um, alarm system and it acts on it. So what it does is it receives the signal and sends me a text message. So, uh, so this is an if-then statement. So if I get the signal, then I send a text message. Uh, send notification advance cell text message. The content is vehicle and driveway. Let's talk about the condition here. So two different things um, are here in the if statement that I'm going to show you. One uh, is if the X10 command is received. Uh, and that's the unit number and house number that I set up in the Honeywell uh, alarm system for the zone 32, which is the vehicle detector. Um, and presence variable equals zero. So this is just a variable uh, that I've created inside ISY that is called not named presence. It means zero if we're not at home, one if we are at home. That presence variable is kind of complicated how it's maintained, which I'm not going to get into. Uh, but the best way to describe it is um, between communicating with the alarm system over X, some different X10 commands, uh, it can tell if the uh, alarm is armed for away mode or stay mode. Um, obviously, then it sets presence based on that. Uh, and it also can detect, if it's not armed, it can detect motion in the house and activity. Uh, if it doesn't, for example, if it doesn't detect any motion or activity or movement in the house for like an hour, uh, or two hours or something, it it assumes that we're away from home and didn't arm the alarm. Um, so anyway, if it detects the X10 command, presence equals zero, or it detects the X10 command and we are at home, uh, but it's at nighttime. So if you recall, um, I don't want I I have that output program to where it doesn't chime at nighttime between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. It doesn't chime. So during that time period, even if we are at home it's going to send a text message. So uh, in another section you actually set this up and I have a destination set up called advanced cell text message uh, with some with a content of vehicle and driveway. Let me show you that now. So if you go over here to configuration, emails, uh, I've got one called advanced cell text message that is my cell phone number at vtex.com um, which if you have Verizon, if you send an email to that address, you get a text message with the content of that email. Uh, and then I have a message set up called Vehicle and Driveway. Ah, here we go. Um, that pretty much looks just like this. It just has a simple message right here that says Vehicle Detected in Driveway at Casa de Willis. That's my house. Um, and that's what is in my text message when it sends me a text. So pretty much that's, uh, that's how it works in the ISY, and I've tested it pretty thoroughly, and it seems to be working great. All right, so that concludes this video on uh, how I hooked that vehicle sensor up to my automation system and set up my notifications and everything. It works great. I'm real happy with it. Uh, so until next time, guys, see you later. Thanks for watching.